Heyo! Today we are talking about self-development and specifically this journal that I found. And don't worry, if you're not a journaler, we're going to talk about that. Um, And more than anything, we're just going to be talking about how important it is for you to continue to self-guide your process back to yourself. Making sure that you're taking time to do that work, whatever that looks like for you. If it's 20 minutes every two years, let's make sure we're intentional about that 20 minutes. It's 20 minutes every day. The faster you're going to get there, the faster you're going to find yourself, the more work that you put into it. So let's go. Welcome to season three. Um, I would love to tell you that season three is full of so many twists and turns and craziness that's going to come in. And honestly, it could be. But this podcast is my own personal journal of escaping from what I deemed a life that wasn't really fit for me. And that started in season one, rooted in the fact that my dream had died and I didn't know what my goals were in life anymore. And as we've walked through the valley of what that looks like and everything encompassing, we've been recording. And so I'm excited to be going into season three. I don't know what's in store for us, but I can tell you that from season one to now, every day feels a little bit better and a lot more aligned. So I'm excited that you're here. If you're just finding this today in season three, um, you can go back and find all the past episodes. I started at around the age of 30 recording this podcast um, every weekday, working through this really painful point in my life. And we're just starting into season three. And I'm excited to see where we get. It's a whole lot of entrepreneur, creative vibes that are going out into this world. And the more that I get to experience that, the better that I feel. So gear up, load up, and let's all go out and change the world. However, that looks for us. But more than anything, let's forgive ourselves for our dream dying and start getting back to rebuilding after that. Hey, yo, how are you? You're looking amazing. Um, yeah, I can see you. You look great. Okay, let's go ahead and ground ourselves in our greatness. I am going to talk about something that very personally excites me. And I, I can't even describe it. Um, when this happens, and it's been happening more often than it used to, And that is super motivating just in and of itself, just the fact that more people are willing to say this. But I've had multiple people say to me, I don't know, Hannah, there's just something about what you're doing and how you're doing it and who you're becoming that me just being in your vicinity, whether I'm listening, whether I'm just by you absorbing your energy of alignment and all the things that you are, that's inspiring. Just watching your journey or just being a part of it. And (laughs) you know, I I think I started this work thinking like, that's going to happen right away. That's going to be so awesome. I can't wait for that day. It's certainly going to be here. And I was very lucky in having one person that gave me that gift early on. And she literally is the reason that I continued on. And I'm so happy that I did because pretty soon (laughs) it became more important that I did this work for myself than even why I got started in the first place, which was like, I'm here to save other people. Because I began to realize that the more important story here is in my ability to save myself from this. And if I can't do that for myself, then who am I 
to do it for other people. And so I wanted to come from this like proof point that I had changed myself. And I truly believe because this feedback isn't coming from people who are just like, oh, I listen to your podcast and I barely know you. This is people who take up physical space with me, who see the change, who feel the change energetically, who understand that this person hits different. And they know because they've seen it over and over and over again. And I think if you can prove it in the physical space, then it means even more, right? Because it's one thing for me to get on here, talk about the things that I talk about for a half an hour, and then go out and be a completely different person. That's totally possible. In fact, a lot of people are capable of doing that. And that's why I believe that I've been getting that feedback lately because it's like, this isn't just a a show. This is real life. This is you really applying these things and changing the person who you were when you first started. And people are responding to that more and more. Right? And I find it even cooler that it's actually people I know. It just means more, right? Because they have every reason to not listen. They have every reason to ignore what I'm saying. They have every reason to go, you are bananas in pajamas and I'm never going to listen to you. And this is ridiculous. And yet they're being impacted by this work. And has it taken a long time? Well, yeah, three years, right? But it's in that consistency. It's in your ability to outlast that. It's in your ability to just keep showing up and trying to figure out how to make it better and honestly, how to just be a better person. And that's where the most growth came, right? Like, again, I could talk about all this stuff all day long. Cool, Hannah. Cool, you have a podcast. You talk about the world and how it should be a better place and how everybody should live their dreams. What a cool imagination. But like, At the same time, I'm figuring out the frequency that I need to match in order to get the dreams that I'm going after. I'm figuring out how to become the type of person who manifests these types of things, how to become a better human being than I was the day before, than I was the year before, than I was the year before that. That, my friends, is major changes. And the fact that people who see me a lot, right? So that increases the chance of me not being who I say I am, right? Because it's, can you be tested and still hold strong and tight to this person? I don't know. And you think that everybody isn't watching that and they absolutely are. And the more work that you do, then the more that you say, I've changed or I'm this person now and it's different and I'm going after these dreams, the more they're watching you with a microscope. And so when I hear that from people that I actually see quite a bit, it's amazing, (laughs) right? Because they're watching. You think they aren't? You think that they weren't watching for two years and going, "Ah, I don't know, I don't know, right? But then the greater movement as a whole, as a person you show up to be, pulls them over. They believe it. They can see it. They can feel it. They know, right? And the only place to go after that is to go, I want to do that too. I want to feel that too. I want to glow like that too. I want to chase my dreams too. Right? And so like, was it sacrificial in nature? Yes, absolutely. But not from without my own benefit. You know, at the end of all of this, right? Say that I don't make it. At the end of all of this, I will never regret getting to know myself. Whether two people listen to this podcast from now until eternity or 200, I'll never, ever regret having spent this much time and focus on myself. And I hope, bottom line, this work does nothing else but encourage people to find themselves first than it will have been 
worth it. First, before starting that business venture, first, before going to school, first, before marrying that person, first, before having those kids, first, before all of those things, find yourself first. And if you're lucky enough <clears throat> to do all those things prior to becoming an adult, an official adult with all the adult things, all the adult markers of adultness, you are so many light years ahead of so many of us. <laughs> and like, I did it all. And I was talking with someone today and I'm like, yeah, I feel like so many of those decisions were based off of things that I didn't even know were true about myself, that I didn't even take time to consider I had a choice. I just assumed this is how you adulted and I just adopted blindly. And now some of those things stick. But some of them, I'm throwing away. No, that didn't stick. No, that doesn't mean anything to me. No, that's not important to me. No, I don't want to live like that. No, thank you. Goodbye. And that's not all the things. But if you don't ask yourself first, <laughs> does this matter to me? Is this meaningful to me? Do I want this? Is this the life that I want? Or am I building this based off of what other people want? Is that how I'm making my decisions? Or do I really want this? And if you ask those questions first, you're just going to be better off. <laughs> Take time to ask. Take time to learn. And that's out of everything. Can you chase your dreams? You absolutely can. Living proof <laughs> of someone who did, who maybe went at it a little bit crazier than you might have. But listen, we all have our path. We all have our ways of getting to the places that we want to go. And so can you chase your dreams? Yes. Should you start with yourself? Absolutely. And it doesn't have to be in a self-reflected journal podcast. It doesn't have to be public at all. But you got to get to know that person. Especially before you let other people in. And if you already let other people in, if you already built things based on who you were before you knew who you were, it's okay. But it definitely would be easier to start there. And if you're already starting there, holy cow, you are saving yourself a lot of pain on the back end. So you're not going to have to undo it. And that's starting from a beautiful place. Okay. Go ahead and ground yourself in your own greatness, right? Maybe people aren't coming up to you and saying, oh my gosh, you're so inspiring. But like, listen, you can be. I didn't start there. Okay? And I certainly am not ended there. That won't be the last time that I hear that, but it is something that I'm extremely proud of, especially with people who take up a lot of physical space with me, because that means they're seeing consistency in my being and my work. It doesn't mean anything if it's only on a screen and you don't actually become that person. Right? Okay, so <laughs> on the topic of getting to know yourself, because I find this to be one of the most important things, I started a journal. And I like to just stroll around Barnes & Noble for fun, just looking for extra things to do for self-development. Um, because kind of obsessed, I, I would love to not use that term, but there is no other fitting term term, I promise you. I am absolutely obsessed. I can't ever sort of save myself from thinking about if that person's living their dream life or like, do they even want to work this job? What would they rather be doing? I wonder if they work this job because maybe they travel six months out of the year. Or I wonder if this is the greatest thing that they've ever done. I wonder how they got started with this. I wonder if this was something they always wanted to become. I wonder if this doesn't matter at all to them. 
And they just like the payout of it. I wonder, I wonder, I wonder, I wonder. I can't stop wondering. I can't stop thinking that. You should know that if I ever meet you, I'm going to be questioning that. I wonder if they live their dream life. I wonder if if they're on a path. I wonder if they're aligned in their life. I wonder what excites them. I wonder what they dream about. I wonder what the vision for their life is. I'm constantly wondering that. So don't feel like I'm undressing you with my eyes, but I absolutely am undressing who you are, what motivates you, what excites you, what gives you energy, what are you doing that lights up your soul. I absolutely am wondering that. So if you want to go ahead and shake hands with me because maybe we're doing that, you can go ahead and start the conversation there. Hey, I know, (laughs) because you've said this before, I know that you're wondering. And yes. I am living my dream life. Or, no, I'm not, but here are the things I'm doing. Here are the things that I'm excited about. What are your thoughts? And then I'll tell you my thoughts. Dude, does it give you energy? Did you find something that you get excited to wake up for? Because not everybody does that. You laugh because you're like, oh, well, if people aren't excited about their life, then what are they doing? But seriously, like, if you're not excited about your life, what are you doing? What do you wake up for? How are you doing this? And right, maybe it's to pay bills, but like, what are the things? I want you to have those conversations and I'm having them for you, whether you know it or not. Okay, so I'm walking around Barnes and Noble and I find this journal and I'm like, oh, that's interesting. And I only, I only saw the side, but it had a match and it said burn after writing. And I'm like, um okay, (laughs) this has officially sparked my interest. I don't know, but the thought of having to write things down that I may need to burn later, okay, secret diary with a lock on it in your childhood bedroom, here for that. And so I pick it up and I I look in it and it's just like all of these prompts. And I'm like, well, I'm not a super prompted journaler. I kind of like to do my own thing. So I don't know if this is going to be the thing for me. But then I start going through what these prompts are. And it's like a serious breakdown of all of the places that you've been and all of the places that you dream of going or what you've done so far. Or what, what was, I'll start pulling some examples. What are your top five songs? Who are the people that you miss? Who do you wish you had never met? Um, What are the five things I've always wanted to do but never have done? What are the five best times I've ever had in my life? Like, these are all the things. And asking these questions might be a great way to better understand who you are because it doesn't just go into like, well, what do you want to do? What's so crazy? It like goes into what's the first memory that you had at the age at which I became an adult, right? Because that's a little bit different for everybody. Uh, The person who's had the greatest impact on my life. And it really just makes you sit here and reflect. And I like how it's guided, but it's pretty loosey-goosey. There really isn't any rhythm or rhyme. I never know what question is going to be on that next page, and I do absolutely love that flow. And I think more than anything, right, with how we started this podcast, like your ability to understand yourself is of utmost importance. Is it utmost? Ut. Utmost? I'll type it up. I don't know. Um, (laughs) Either way, it's super important. Why? Uh, Well, this might be a great place to find what are the things, what are the reoccurring themes, right? To just keep talking about maybe all of your memories have dogs in them. Well, what are you doing with dogs? Like, do you just have a dog? Do dogs really excite you? Do you you need to look into vet school? Where, Where do we take this? Or is it just something that you like, right? Maybe not something you would do every day. I don't know, but there... If you go through this entire notebook and you don't find some sort of theme or you don't find some sort of release, right? Holy crap, here's a heavy one. The things that scare me about getting old. Oh my gosh, if I could spend my last hours of life with anyone doing anything, I would blank. My legacy is, right? And those are later in the book. 
feel like you have to go through the whole process of like this deeper understanding of who you are, but what a beautiful way to prompt yourself. And what a cool thing someday for someone to find. (laughs) So maybe you don't burn it. Maybe you keep it. And maybe it's just this beautiful reality. And maybe you go back to it and you go, oh, hmm, that isn't what I would say now. That isn't what I believe now. This one is one that would that is probably ever evolving for me. Religion in three words. If I had written that one two years ago, we would absolutely be in a different place than we are now. And, you know, that's sort of the beauty of documenting your evolution as a human. And, and writing things down is a great way to do that. Journals like this, this one is just my... Um, as of late favorite. You can probably find it at Barnes & Noble. You can probably find it on Amazon, but it's uh, Burn After Writing by Sharon Jones, if you want to pick one up. Tell her I sent you. (laughs) I don't know her, (laughs) but you can. Uh, (laughs) But that evolution piece, that ability to go back and, and, you know, date these things and see Did I grow out of that? Do I still believe the same things? Would I write this journal different now, right? Maybe five years from now, maybe two years from now, have my opinions changed or have they stayed the same? And religion is one of those things that has really evolved or spirituality as a whole. Not that I like intentionally went out. It was just like I had very little faith then when I first started because of sort of the dark place that I was in. And Hmm. The evolution of my spirituality really came from this even darker moment than that, where I didn't have the strength to get up. And I saw what that faith could do to pull you through. Someone says, like, God carrying your cross for you is when you have a deeper understanding of true spirituality and faith. And yeah, I feel like I did experience that. And so religion now, as I would write that, is something completely different from where we started. And that's just one example. But like, what a beautiful timeline. I love lines in the sand. Journals are a great way to do that. Writing things down are a great way to do that. There also is just this physical exchange of energy, right? Of writing something down. I um, I can put all the things into my calendar, into my digital calendar. And that's really important because there are all these email prompts and there are ways to automate things that are beautiful. But if I don't physically write it down, the likelihood of me remembering it lowers by at least 50%, if not more. Even with the email prompts, right? It's something about that physical exchange of releasing the words and then working to put them there. And some people aren't journalers. So they go, I would never write in something like that. But anyone can become a journaler, really. Anyone can write. You don't even have to be good at it. It really is more about the releasing and the forced thought in the beginning, Right? Because so much of this self-reflection, this self-reflection work is going to be that. But I am telling you, if it's something that you would never ever feel comfortable with, then that might not be the right route for you. But no matter what, you have to reflect on these things. You have to have these conversations, maybe even just reading it, reading the prompts, getting you to think, even if you never write it down, would be super important for you. Um, so that's the journal that I like right now, just in case you were looking for a self-reflection journal because you're going, I'd really like to keep growing, really like to keep knowing myself. How do I get to know myself better? Uh, journaling is a really great way. Also, just like we said last week, trying, right? Listen to podcasts, read books try if improvement is something that you want, like you want to start chasing goals or you want to decide what your dreams would be if you actually got to decide, or I don't know, call me crazy, but you wanted to start that thing that you have always had in your heart. 
start with just experimenting what hits with you. Is it a male voice? Are they more coachy? Are they more inspiring? Or are they more threatening? Or are they more like, again, if you don't actually experiment, it's hard to find what you like. And so if you're just always adopting what your cubicle partner says to adopt, that may be a terrible way to experience this because you're going to go, oh no, that didn't hit right. And that's why I'm writing from the place that I'm writing. And that's why we're developing this podcast the way that we are, because it's so unique. Your path, your pursuit of finding yourself, of finding what your dreams are, of all of those things are so uniquely and intrinsically you. Like you know what the answer is. And so I don't like to give you a lot of answers because if you hate journaling, it is not going to be the right answer for you on self-discovery. Okay. I had a love-hate. Writing in a journal really scared me when I didn't know where I was going and what I would even write. Trust. I had a um, start today journal sit on my shelf, even though I was super pumped about it, for about six months because it scared me. I wouldn't even open it. I was just like, huh. hopefully people see that I have a start today journal. <laughs> hopefully they think that I write in it just because it's on my bookshelf. <laughs> right. And like some of the things you may have to push yourself outside of that comfort zone. That might be a part of it. And that was part of it for me. Just push yourself to write anyways. And once I did, I got into a flow and I figured out that I really like it and that it's a really important part of how I start my day and how I continue to reflect as I continue to do this work. But I wouldn't have known that if I didn't keep pushing myself and my own self-growth. And it happened over time. I had to keep showing up. I had to keep putting myself through the misery that was writing in a journal for the first time because it doesn't flow. Like they say it's going to. Trust me, you'll get a pen and a piece of paper and you'll just write and write and write and write and write. You won't. Well, you might not. You might, but you might not. And if you don't, that's okay. It'll come. Just keep showing up for it. Eventually, it happens. But regardless, you know what needs to come next for you. You absolutely do. And if we spend all of our time wondering if we know what the answer is, we probably are never going to value what we truly know. And you know you. You know you. We just don't get used to asking ourselves, right? The norm, as it should exist, is to ask outside of ourselves. And the crazy thing is, we've always had the answers. We've always known. We've always known. And so journals are a great way to prompt that work. Journals are a great way to take part in that discovery, to take an active part in that discovery. But it's whatever it looks like for you. Don't just take advice from your cubicle partner and then think that you're an utter failure because she started doing Pilates and writing in a journal and her life has completely changed and you started doing Pilates and writing in a journal and all you have is sore thighs, and an empty notebook. Your life hasn't changed at all. Oh my gosh, you must not be doing it right. Oh my gosh, you must not be, right? What are the solutions now? No, that may not be what hits for you, right? And it's okay to come back to the drawing board and go, no, not my thing. And I would say, usually my timeline of stickiness is me showing up every day for 90 days, you'll know what that window looks like for you. Um, but once I've done it 90 days straight, it's it's pretty much into my cycle of how I'm being. You'll know what like consistency adoption looks like for you. But I am telling you, if you're only picking it up once or twice a week, it might not be as sticky and it might take you longer to show up to do that, which is okay too right? Not all of us have open schedules to just journal all day long either. Hi, I am not unaware of that. Not all of us have all the time in the world to self-reflect. Not all of us have all of the time in the world to do this work. But at some point, you're going to have to make the time. You're going to have to get up earlier or stay later or 
I don't know, do it during your lunch break. I don't know where you'll find the time, but I'm telling you, if you even commit to like a sliver of this work, it's going to be meaningful and it will change the direction of your life in some way, shape or form. I don't like making promises often, but I will tell you, and it's not even a journal or a, a dream list or a, a manifestation board or meditating, or yoga, or all the things that people are telling you probably right now you have to do, or manifesting, or whatever. It's a collection of a lot of these things, but you know, and the best way to find out is to learn more about yourself, and not coming from a place of hate, like we always say, coming from a place of love. Oh my gosh, Hannah, you have a lot of ideas. And normal old conversations would have been like, you have a lot of ideas. Good luck bringing them all to life. That's probably a really bad quality to have as an entrepreneur because you're probably going to start and stop a lot of businesses. Your mind is way too scatterbrained. (laughs) Good luck though. You got this, right? And coming from a place of love, we can acknowledge all of the things that we bring to the table, all of the skills that we have to offer to the world has beneficial for wherever we want to go. Now, that doesn't mean that everything that you want to do is going to be a fit, but that does mean that you can find good in every single thing that you bring to this world. You absolutely are capable of doing that. And if you weren't, you can just message me. I'll turn it into a good thing, I promise. I might even turn it into a great thing, I'm just saying. But like, make the investment. Make the investment. Maybe you go out and buy a burn after writing journal and you just start having those conversations with yourself because they're really important prompts. It's really important to be able to gauge your growth. Or maybe you just start reading that book or you just start going on a walk and listening to the podcast that you wanted to try. You just start testing, navigating what self growth and development looks like for you because The one thing that I know to be true is that that path back to self is so personal and so unique. There is not any one size fits all. I couldn't give you this book at the perfect time in your life and it hit the way that it hit me. Nope. Right? And so your job is just to continue seeking self. Continue finding what fits for you. And it's going to be different for everybody. So maybe your cubicle neighbor isn't all that helpful. But you can at least continue striving for yourself. As always, you're smart, you're strong, you're beautiful. What are you going to do? Change the world. Hey, thank you so much for listening. If you're still here, go ahead and check us me, it's just me, out on (laughs) all of our socials. I post every day, a post with some inspirational, I don't know, quotes and movements, um, definitely on Instagram and Facebook. You can find us at the death of a dream also on LinkedIn, but I think that's just me. It's just Hannah Ness. Um, but you can check out kind of some daily encouragement to go down, chase your dreams and live your best life. You can always check back here in the show notes for anything that we might have talked about at some point in the show, anything that I'm creating at this given point. I won't necessarily talk about it on the podcast every single day, but you can always find what I'm working on in the show notes. So thank you so much for listening. You, all of you, whether you listen to one episode, five minutes or five seconds, make a difference to me and I couldn't be here doing this work if no one listened at all. So every person over one is just a bonus and I feel extremely grateful to be a part of your day. Thank you.